G'day everyone, my name is Dylan Neal and I'm the effects lead at the UTS ALA. Uh, today I'm going to be talking about Spirit. And Spirit is our student film from last year. And specifically, I'm going to talk about how we use Houdini, um, not just for your standard simulations and effects and stuff, but also for, you know, asset and set building using Solaris and USD. So a little bit about myself, I've been in the 3D industry for 25 years. I've worked at a bunch of companies, you know, all of the usual suspects, your Animal Logics, Methods, Rising Sun, Weta, all that kind of place, mainly concentrating on effects, lighting and crowd simulation. And around this time last year, I joined up with the UTS ALA as the effects lead. So what is UTS ALA? Well, it stands for University of Technology Sydney Animal Logic Academy. So basically it's a partnership between UTS and Animal Logic and we offer a one year accelerated master's degree. And in this master's degree, our aim is to kind of elevate the student's skills up to an industry standard level. And so that means we don't just focus on the technical skills like how to use Houdini and Maya and all that kind of stuff, but we also focus on the soft skills. And this can be anything from kind of teamwork to how to think creatively, even down to sort of office etiquette stuff like, you know, don't microwave fish in the office microwave. And we teach all this by essentially running our own real world production studio. So we kind of run a full production pipeline uh, and everyone, every student has their role. We have students who are going to be animators, students who will be in the effects department. You know, we usually have a student, at least one student, who's going to be like a producer or production assistant. Um, and we do this because the majority of job roles out there in the industry are at big studios. And the big studios really want specialists. And the other way we sort of emulate this production pipeline is that we actually use the real production tools that they use in the industry. So, you know, for lighting, we use Katana. For compositing, we use Nuke, you know, obviously effects in Houdini. And we have like, uh, you know, a full sort of shotgun system as well that uh, everything is kind of checked into and we have dailies and so on. And so, you know, for a smaller team that might make life a little harder. But the advantage is that our students are kind of ready to go as soon as they finish up, they're ready to go and plug into any kind of large production pipeline. On top of the masters, we have also recently started offering um, Houdini short courses. Uh, so these are kind of run over a couple of nights or on a weekend or a couple of weekends. Initially, we've done some stuff like the basics of Houdini. Um, you know, and we have more uh, interesting courses like that coming up. So please keep an eye on our socials uh, for more information. So I might just show you guys a quick sort of obligatory showreel and you can have a look at some of the students work from previous years. And then we'll get into talking a little bit about the project and the technology behind it.
So as far as technology is concerned, uh, you know, we as teachers, we kind of have to sort of, we have to keep up with the latest technology, that's for sure. And we kind of have to employ a little bit of a, a crystal ball in this regard because, um, you know, there's, there's a little bit of a guessing game as to what's going to be the next big thing. And we do this because there's no point teaching things that are about to be replaced like technology or software and stuff like that. So one prime example of this is USD. And you may have heard of it. It's kind of the hot new buzzword at the moment in 3D. Uh, and it stands for Universal Scene Description. And essentially it's a new file format for storing 3D scene data. And so why will we need something like this? Like there's already kind of things like Alembic and FBX and stuff like that. Why do we need another format? Well, USD is a bit more sort of geared towards large productions because it kind of tries to address the issue of you, if you have an asset, rock number five, for instance, and it's got to go at a specific, you know, location in a scene, you know, you'll have like a layout department that might be handling that sort of set building work. In order to, for all of the various departments to work concurrently, all of these different assets that you're going to be placing into a scene might be sort of at different levels of production. So some might still be in modeling, then some might already be in surfacing. And you don't want all the sort of departments that work downstream of this to have to kind of worry about you know, what version I'm using or what, uh, you know, if it's in, if it's a model or has it gone through surfacing, is it animated, all this kind of stuff. So over the years, the various companies have all kind of rolled their own solutions to sort of transferring this data between the different departments. But uh, USD is aiming to become kind of an industry standard for this. And so at the ALA, we've actually based our pipeline on USD since like 2018, which is really early compared to the rest of the industry. And of course, this early adoption brought along many challenges, but we really felt it was important because we think that um, USD is going to have a huge role to play in the future of the industry. So every year, the students produce a short film project. And last year, the short film was called Spirit. And Spirit is the story of a wombat that's caught in a bushfire. And this bushfire is represented by this gigantic kind of fire monster. And in order to survive the bushfire and escape, the wombat has to kind of rely on his own courage. And this courage is kind of embodied in a sort of mystical thylacine spirit. And because we're running like a full production pipeline, that means the students do everything. So. For the first couple of weeks, they work on story development. And just like any other production, you have an art department. And yeah, check out some of this concept art uh, that the students produced uh, early on in, in the project. I'm always blown away by the amazing artists that come through the course. One advantage of USD is that for every shot, we have a master USD file. And that file references in all of the assets required to kind of build that shot. Um, these references are stored as asset resolver links inside this file instead of actual file paths to all of the different USDs. And long story short, what that means is that when the assets are published into the pipeline, this shot description file will automatically uh, reference in all of those changes without any human interaction. Uh, so that enables us to do stuff like this. This is an automated uh, technical check render um, this runs every night for every shot. And what this does is it enables us to very quickly see, you know, all the latest assets that are in a shot and to check for when things are breaking or if there's uh, errors. Because often what happens in production is that these kind of errors aren't really caught until lighting starts. And so that means that the lighters, you know, they might not be able to start lighting straight away because they're busy, you know, doing all of these tech checks and having to kick things back uh, into other departments. And so this is just like another example of how USD can really help to make like a pipeline run a lot smoother. With Houdini 18, SideFX added USD support with uh, their Solaris toolkit, also known as LOPS. And this is a new kind of node context in Houdini for working directly with USD data. And of course, you can 
leverage all of Houdini's sort of procedural power uh, to uh, manipulate this data, but you also can do things like just grab objects and move them around in a standard kind of workflow that you'd have in any other sort of 3D software. So to create the environments for Spirit, uh, we use this system and we use both methods, both the procedural and the more manual method. So here we're looking at the, the sort of hero foreground environment. And as you can see, most of the large assets were placed by hand. Um, and you can see all of those little nodes there, they're all of the um, transforms for each one of those objects. And this was done so that those assets could be uh, a, a lot more easily sort of art directed per shot. And you can see the performance is really good even with like all of this data in here. Like each one of these tree asset USDs has hundreds of leaf USD references uh, on all the branches there. So for the smaller kind of foreground assets and also for background trees, we used Houdini's procedural scattering tools. And Houdini's kind of, it's the king of doing this kind of stuff where you can just take a bunch of objects, um, you know, scatter them all over a ground and it has like lots of control over what objects go where. And so now with Solaris, those standard scattering tools uh, can be used for scattering USD data instead of just kind of arbitrary geometry. And not only that, because USD allows for nested references, we were able to use this scatter not just for asset placement within the environment, but also on the assets themselves. So these leaves we're looking at here are USD files. And we bring them in with, you know, all of their shaders and textures and so on. And just like with the environment, when we scatter these leaves onto the tree branches, the, they preserve their links back to the original uh, USD files. And so if someone updates the leaf model or the textures, you know, those changes automatically get propagated all the way down the pipeline. Another great USD feature that we rely heavily on is variance. For instance, if I want to drop a tree into a scene, we just have like one master USD file for this tree. But inside of that file, we can reference different versions of that tree, which are called variants. Uh, so you can see here, we, we had a couple of different um, settings here for kind of various wind strengths. And another cool thing we had was that the fire that's on all the trees was actually part of each tree asset. And again, it was just a variant that we could turn on and off per tree. And previously, this kind of a feature would require, you know, the pipeline team to get in there and write code for every single 3D application that was going to support it. But now because this is a part of USD itself, any application that supports USD can actually read and write and modify this data with minimal development time for the studio. And here's a quick look at the tree building system that one of the students came up with. Essentially, we had um, models of all the kind of major sort of forms of the tree was done in uh, modeling. And then this setup would look at uh, the geometry and work out things like where the tips of the branches are, you know, how high the tree was and all that kind of stuff. And then from there, we'd take these little L system branches, minor kind of branches, and they were scattered all over the tree. Um, and to that, of course, we could add the wind simulation and all that kind of stuff that became part of the variance. And then onto those minor branches, we were able to scatter the leaves, as you saw. And here's kind of the progression of that asset-based tree fire. Uh, this was again done by one of the students, of course. Um, so you can see, you know, started off pretty sort of basic and uh, improvements were made and so on. And then in the end, uh, we were able to take this one uh, fire setup in a Houdini and, you know, tweak some settings and apply it to all of the tree models. And, you know, we had a lot of fire in this film, obviously. Um, so here's a setup one of the students made, and this was kind of a master uh, setup to place fire on the ground. And this student kind of created this setup. Uh, they were able to then publish it into the pipeline and then other artists, other effects artists uh, could pick up his setup and use them in the various shots. So in each shot, the students were able to get in there, you know, paint on the ground exactly where the fire goes. Uh, then this tool would actually take each kind of individual sort of clump of fire and split that out into its own simulation. So they could run kind of in parallel, like all at the same time on the farm, uh, which was really efficient with the farm time. 
And this tool had a mesh preview mode and a low res simulation mode so that we could just run out simple flipbook renders and be able to kind of approve things in dailies. Uh, so that was also really handy. And the other sort of major use of fire, of course, was this fire monster or fire spirit. And this, as you can imagine, presented lots of challenges because not only did it need to sort of feel big and imposing, which means lots of detail and lots of simulation time, but then we had a real issue of smoke management. And, you know, when he waves his arms around and all this kind of stuff looks really cool, but then just smoke would go everywhere, all up in his face, all over the wombat, all over, you know, the entire, covering the entire scene. Uh, so, so simple tricks, the best, you know, we would just get in there and blast a little bit of uh, well-placed wind here and there just to kind of clear things up. And uh, in the end, the result, as you can see, uh, was amazing. And last effect I want to just go through a bit was the uh, thylacine trail. This is really cool. I really like this effect. It's kind of very uh, unique. Uh, so we wanted to add a sort of magical trail that the thylacine left behind uh, that was inspired by indigenous artwork. So we actually worked with a local indigenous artist uh, who helped us design this effect. And you can see some of the various different versions we kind of came up with here. We're looking at things like, you know, is are his feet going to leave some kind of a footfall sort of effect behind? Is the trail going to fade out or just stay behind? And in the end, you know, we came out with this, you know, really unique, uh, interesting kind of effect. So well done from the students. So that's it for me. Thanks for watching the presentation. Uh, I've got some contact details up on the screen if you want to get in touch with us. Uh, there's the uh, email address or we're on all the major social networks. And uh, yeah, so please enjoy the rest of the program at AEAF. Looks like some amazing speakers coming up and I'll see you next time.